over to the table. And uh, it may start live as we're walking over there. Um, oh, it is. We're live. Hey, thanks for joining us. This is my friend Diana. Hi. Say hi to the nice people. Oh, the nice people. They're, they're going to have nice comments for us shortly. Okay. So do give some nice comments for Diana. Yeah, I'll put this over here. Okay. Uh, Diana, you, you said that this has been bothering you for three weeks. Yes. On your left eye. On my left eye. Is it painful? Uh, it was swollen. It had a big bump, a really big bump on the lower lid, and it was itchy, and yes, it was painful. It and was the, whole, painful. the whole upper eyelid was sore, and when I put a little pressure on my eyeball right here, it was very, very sore. Was anything coming out? No. Mm -hmm. No no Sorry. discharge, mm -hmm. no pus? No. Rena says hi. Oh, Rena! <laughs> Rena hi, is Rena. our physician assistant who will be starting oh. in late December. Rena, thank you for watching. Okay. We look forward to the wedding. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get some gloves because okay. things on the eye are catching. That's what's bothering my husband. <laughs> Too often have a way of being contagious. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to look, come on in as close as you guys can to Let's see, see that what we're going to be looking at here. So we have two things going on. Which one was first, the lower or the upper? The lower. The lower. So you see a little bit of inflammation has been here. Some desquamation of the skin, and if we pull the lid down and look inside, you see, I don't know if you can really see it, it's a little, little redder in color than the surrounding conjunctiva. There, there's no real, I'm going to push on it just barely here. It's not going to push on people's eyes, but I'm just checking here to see. I, I can feel a firmness in there, but I'm not 100% convinced that there's a pus collection, that it might just be inflammation. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this upper lid because... If you look real carefully, I'm going to stick my finger there to kind of evert the edge a little bit. There's a little bump there, and it may have a little bit of pus in there. One thing that can help bring that, I don't even know if you can see it because it's such a tiny little bump there on the top eyelid, right where the, the color of the eye against the uh, white conjunctiva is. We call that the iris, where the color of the eye is. Right where that comes, there's a little bump there, and it may have some pus in it. Okay. Um, sometimes antibiotics will be used for these when they're lasting a long time, like this one on your lower lid. Um, and when they are used, uh, it's a different situation than just a sty. We actually call it a hordeolum, when you have this, this inflammation going on, but nothing coming out. Actually, we, we use granulation to be the word okay. that describes kind of what's going on in that lower eyelid of yours. And they can stay for a long time. They can be quite chronic. But they don't really go anywhere or do anything. Okay. This one on the lower eyelid. So for that, I actually would recommend, even though I don't usually use antibiotics for many things on the eye, this is one thing I would actually antibiotics by mouth. Systemic antibiotics okay. with just azithromycin to help get, some, um, get that to go down. That's what's been found to work. And then the upper eyelid, warm compresses. Warm wet compresses, putting them in a, in the uh, microwave with some water in them, a uh, washcloth. Being careful because it doesn't get too hot. Yeah. I'm putting that on your eye and doing that throughout the day, you know, three times a day okay. at least, until the temperature goes away, until it's not hot anymore, to see if you can draw out any discharge from that. We can also, in the office, numb up your eye and just put a little poke into that to let it drain if you want to do it. We've done it on a video before, and uh, on one fellow who had a lot of pus come out. Yours, though, will not have a lot, if okay. any. Uh, we may do it and just get some blood in your eye, and that's all that happens from it. So that's why I'm not saying yeah. no, let's yeah, jump to yeah. that. It's something we can do later if you if you aren't able to get good drainage at okay. home. Um, yeah, that'd probably be best. And then we'd also want to make sure your tetanus shot is up to date, so we'll do that after we get done with the video. Okay. Uh, check that and give it to you if, if we need to get it. Um, and that's about all we're going to do today. It's not going to be all that visually interesting as the video where we do the sty, and we'll, of course, put a link to that. Did you have any questions about it? No. Uh, number one, does it spread? Is, okay. Is, is this causing this up okay. here to get it? Let's talk about that. Uh, this one has not had any pus coming out of it at all. Mm -hmm. So chances are it's, it's not, even though you think with two of them it would be. It could be that there was a common thing that caused both. Okay. That you were exposed to a bacteria that got into the little ducts there for the oil glands in the eyelid. And then they started to have this um, starting an infection or some a granuloma formation in the lower lid, a little bit of a, a, a abscess of sorts in the upper eyelid. Okay. So most no can styes get infected by like gangrene? 
Uh, different bacteria. Staph is the bacteria we're worried about here. Okay. And not MRSA usually. Usually it's just a run-of-the-mill staph like we have on our bodies anyway. Okay. But it just got stuck inside of the gland. It may be that you got exposed to a more um, invasive or aggressive form of a staph okay. bacteria. And it could be the MRSA or the, the one that's resistant to a lot of antibiotics. Thankfully, the antibiotic we're using usually does fine with these. Okay. And really, it's just to help get that lower eyelid uh, lump to get smaller okay. and we'll be following it over time. We'll have to recheck you in a month if it's not gone. Right. Yeah, because it has gone down a lot. Okay. In fact, I thought I was over it and then I saw this on top and I said, oh no. <laughs> I don't want to know. Something that's going on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we, I would recommend an antibiotic called azithromycin for this situation where you just have to take one a day. Okay. All right. Yeah. That'd be good. And, and in your case, we'll start out with just a three-day course and then see how it goes. Do I need to do any eye wash or anything like that? Just the, the compress. Just the compress. Well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. right. Any other questions? No. Do, do any of our viewers have any other questions or, or comments that we'd like to let Diana know about this? Someone said it might be a spider bite. Uh, I don't think a spider crawled in her eye. No. <laughs> um, now, I will say some of my friends who make videos like this, other doctors across the country, talk a lot about spider bites and have videos on the spider bites. Uh, Dr. Gwen and I joke about the MRSA spider, the MRSA spider, because people come in saying, I have a spider bite. We don't understand why everything gets blamed on spiders, because <laughs> spiders have nothing to do with the little painful red dot you get on your leg or arm that then gets uh, a lot of pus behind it. That's a bacteria that got into a hair follicle. It's, there's no spider involved in, in most of these. And in this part of the country, we rarely have spiders actually responsible for what somebody comes in calling a spider bite. Do you drain this diet or cut it off? Uh, we will on occasion drain them. We don't cut them off though. Yeah, uh, that, that other video we have, we actually drain the guy's diet. This one we'll leave alone because it's going to go yeah, away. It's going It'll away. drain on its yeah. own and the one on the lower part just needs to be treated with the, the antibiotics because it's kind of chronic and hasn't gone away yet. Okay. Your patient has a lovely smile. Oh, thank you. That's why I asked you to do that. <laughs> Okay, if that's it, we'll wrap up. Thanks all for joining us. And uh, oh, I do want to let everybody, and I'll let you know too. October 27th at 1.30, there is going to be a very special live Auburn Medical Group video that takes place in Mr. Schroeder's classroom at Placer High School. Oh. So you'll want to, if, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, put that on your calendar. It's October 27th, 1.30, and it'll be live on the channel. There should already be a link somewhere for that uh, that you can find. If not, when it comes up, you just look on YouTube and, and we'll be live. We may be setting up for a while. Okay. So if oh, you're interested good. in that, yeah. you yeah, can see us in the classroom. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Gwen is going to do a procedure on, on me. Oh, okay. The last time he, he you know, if you see the <laughs> scar there? <laughs> yeah. No, oh, you're showing them the scar? Yeah, that's from the last time we did. Was that, that was, an extra charge? Or? <laughs> yeah. I think that was, was that two years ago? I, I'm trying to think. It was one or two years ago. Uh, one of my kids was in the class. I have to think which one of my children was in the class. And now I have another child in this class. Oh so we have my to gosh. Do okay. Something else. So uh, we will be talking more about that as we go. And we do want to encourage people who may not already be on a Patreon that might be interested in that. It's at patreon.com slash Auburn Medical Group. And Diana doesn't have to do that because she and her husband support us through different ways by coming here all the time and <laughs> visiting yeah. us. So thank you so much. Until next time, Diana and Dr. Mark Vaughn telling all of you to stay in good health. Thank you. Okay. All right, so I need to.